brethren, please stand for our prayer. Yahuwah, our loving and almighty God, we approach you today to worship and bring praises unto thy most glorious name. Yahuwah, we thank you so much for all the countless blessings you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Thank you so much for your love and care. Thank you for our life and strength, for keeping us away from all dangers and troubles in life. You have always protected each and every one of thy people. Yahuwah, we thank you so much for your great kindness and to each and every one of us. We love you so much, Yahoo. And now we are here to study thy holy words. Please bless thy people. Let us learn more about thy holy words and holy commandments. Allow us to practice them in our daily life as we continue to obey thy holy instructions. We ask you, Yahuwah, to kindly bless your son who will preach thy holy words. Kindly grant unto him always the knowledge and wisdom, the guidance that he needs as he lead us today in this holy gathering. Please be with us in this holy worship service. We always feel thy holy presence. We feel your love unto each one of us. Allow us to continue to proclaim your name, Yahuwah. Praises be unto thee. Yahushua, we thank you for all your love and care. Thank you for the many grace and mercies. Thank you for guiding us in our daily life. We ask you to please forgive us for all the sins that we have committed. Abba, we call upon you. Please accept our humble offerings. Please accept each and every one of us today. Please bless each one of us as we continue to serve and glorify the mighty name. For we ask all of this in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. beloved brothers and sisters in the faith as always we are being reminded to remember what you can read on that scripture that is being flashed on your screen before we study 
our homily. That is very important that every time we gather, we pay attention, focus, focus on what we are studying. The topic that we are going to discuss today is what Yahushans must do in times of extreme danger and trouble. The Bible, beloved brethren, tells about what life will be like in the time, what life will be like in the time period before Yahushua Hamasiach's return and take us with him. And that is before the time of the rapture. The Bible already tells us what's going to take place, what the world will be like in time before the rapture. While well, this is also known as the end times, the resources here that we are going to read will help us learn more about what is predicted to happen and the signs of the times that can help us determine where we are on the timeline of biblical prophecies about the end of the world. The end of the world, beloved brethren, is not going to happen in a blink of an eye. We already understood that. That blink of an eye will happen on the rapture, but that's not yet the end. That's not yet the end of the world because there will be a thousand years after the rapture, a thousand years of reign of our Lord Yahushua HaMashiach, and then after that thousand years, they still have a small space or time that God will give Satan, you know, because he will be released from his prison. And try to imagine what's going to happen once he was released in that prison or from that prison that he will deceive many nations from Gog and Magog. And the Bible clearly stated he could deceive still their number is as many as the sands of the sea. And then they will gather themselves. We know what's going to happen. They will gather themselves according to the prophecy. On that end, right? End of the world. That will be the last portion. They will gather themselves to attack the kingdom of the Christ. But there will be a fire that will come down. They will not be able to do that. And they will be put in that lake of fire. So that's the end point. But prior to that, prior to the rapture, the wedding of the, the lamb, the return of uh, the lamb and his kahal and the angels on earth and the incarceration of the devil and then establishing the uh, millennial kingdom and then reigning for a thousand years, and then the end of the world. So those are the events that is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Now, let us study a little bit more about it, beloved brethren, so that uh, we can see what is actually, what actually the Bible is saying. Now, what the, the world today that we live in is, you can see and you can experience, it's not getting any better. But that's why we are always being encouraged. Pray, pray, beloved brethren, pray and pray and pray. Ask God. Now, you might be saying, oh, God already decided it to happen that way. But we still pray because that's what he said. We pray. So we keep on praying. We keep on praying that the people of this world will change their mind. And those governments, the, the, the leaders of the gover every government will also uh, change their minds. So what are it actually, what exactly are the reasons for the deterioration of our world today? Why? Why is it deteriorating? Why is the world going to, to this kind of stage? Like the world is like becoming rotten. Well, let us read what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 24, 5, 6, NLV and Amplified. The earth has been made unclean by its people. They have sinned and not obeyed the laws 
and have broken the agreement that was to be forever. So the earth is cursed and those who live in it suffer for their guilt. So the people of the earth are burned and few men are left. The earth also is polluted by its inhabitants because they have transgressed laws, violated statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and those who live on it suffer the punishment of their guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned under the curse of God's wrath, and few people are left. So what are the reasons for the deterioration of our world today? Here is the reasons, beloved. Here are the reasons that God gave. A curse devours the earth. Why? Well, the earth was already polluted. Now, who polluted the earth? It was polluted by its inhabitants. Has made it unclean. The earth has made unclean by its people. People, that's us, had transgressed laws. Who's lost? The laws of God violated God's statutes and broken the everlasting covenant that should last forever. You see, this is, beloved brethren, what had happened and transpired. That's why the world is deteriorating because we as people, we are the ones who deteriorated it. The world, per se, when God created the earth, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It became our, you know, it became our home. This is our home planet. This is where God placed people to live. But what did those people, what did the people who are supposed to take care of the planet, who is supposed to take care of everyone do? The Bible clearly said, you have defiled the earth. The earth has been made unclean by its people, by sinning and not obeying and breaking the agreement that was to be forever. The inhabitants of the earth, the one who inhabits it, the people, polluted it. We well, polluted it morally and polluted it actually natural things you know the natural things we are polluting lots of things waters polluted you know what else air becomes polluted you name it it's all happening now what further proves that the effect of what the people of the earth or the planet earth did well let us read an excerpt okay uh, this is an excerpt from uh, active sustainability.com and it says a new report has warned of the difficulties the planet is facing, the Earth. More than one million species are in imminent danger of extinction. Oh, you, you know why? Those, those, those animals are actually being extinct, you know? Who do you think is the culprit? A devastating new report has warned of the difficulties the planet is facing due to the dis indiscriminate actions indiscriminate actions of human beings. So people already notice what God has said. People notice what they have done because they wrote it. A further conclusion from the report points out how humans are the main cause of the loss of biodiversity problems the planet is facing. Five elements in particular are driving in environmental de degradation and in all of them, humans are the common denominator. Well, the Bible is pretty precise, beloved brethren. It is precise. The Bible is precise. The actions of human beings affecting the sea and land, altering their ecosystems, the plunder of resources from the sea, emission of greenhouse gases causing pollution and in introduction of foreign invasive species in ecosystems where they do not belong. See, that's how we're doing, beloved brethren. The Bible is so clear that the earth has been made unclean by its people. What did people do? They have sinned and not obeyed the laws. That's number one. And they have broken the agreement that was to be forever. The earth also is polluted by its inhabitants. 
because they have transgressed laws. It could God's laws, government laws, natural law, they actually polluted it. You know, they have transgressed those laws, Not especially natural law. Natural law, you know, God placed those uh, species in different places, but we crossbreed everybody, you know? That's what we have done. We lost all the, the loss of uh, biodiversity became a problem. You know, look at, look at what people are experimenting. We are experimenting lots of things. Now, not only that, beloved brethren, not only that, that uh, about, you know, those species on earth became a problem. You know, it's what you can see uh, because we have polluted uh, the thing, pollution and the introduction of foreign invasive species and ecosystem where they do not belong. I, I believe in the northern part of the United States, they introduce a species there that are actually killing the lake. You know, those, uh, the, it came from China, you know, those fishes that were introduced there, carp, I, be, I believe it's carp, you take it out. It's actually like uh, need to be contained. You know why? Because people introduce foreign invasive species in the ecosystem that it doesn't belong. The, the law of the natural law that God created for the earth to be continuously be beautiful was actually polluted by man. Now, when it comes to morality, let's hear what they say about the morality of man. Why is it that the morale of people today is becoming worse? Let us read. Why moral values are eroding in modern sphere? Brainly.in. There is no one definitive answer to why moral values are eroding in modern society. As there are likely many factors at play. This is what this person actually who blogged this says. You know, he said, you know, there are many factors that are play. That's why there are the values of, uh, of people today is eroding too. Some possible reason include the influence of social media. Well, that could be true. Mm -hmm. A decline in religious values. Oh, he is very precise on that one. I want to give emphasis on that one. A decline in religious values. A focus on individualism and materialism and the breakdown of traditional family structures. Traditional family structures. Remember, God created family. He created a man. He created a woman. And then he joined them together and asked them and told them actually, be fruitful and multiply and subdue it. That's the traditional family structure. It's broken down now, right? Social media can be a powerful tool for spreading information and connecting people, but it can also promote a culture of superficiality. Oh, that's what he said, and I agree with that. Comparison and competition. It can be easy to get caught up in the need for likes, followers, and validation rather than focusing on developing strong moral values. Oh, that's what are the people today are doing. Oh, I got lots of likes. I got thousands of likes. Oh, I got the millions of likes. Okay, so you got money, right? But what happened? Are you actually uh, focusing on developing on strong moral values? Religion has historically played a significant role in shaping moral values, but in many modern societies, there has been a decline in religious affiliation and practice. This has led to a shift away from traditional moral codes and greater emphasis on personal freedom and individualism. Look what's going to happen. What's happening? This is what's going, this is what's happening on earth in our world today. And we are still in it, beloved brethren. Now, we are not surprised about these things because the scriptures already said, it's already said that people who are placed by God on earth will make it unclean physically because they are polluting it. And 
breaking the laws, the laws of God, the laws of morale, the laws of nature. We are breaking all of those laws. It was already said. It was already prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. That's what it is now happening in our time. Now, what else is going on? What else was prophesied? What are the consequences the world would face because human continue to defile it according to Yahushua HaMashiach? Let us read in Matthew 24, 6, 8 footnote of the last day Bible. This is what we can read. Yahushua now tells his followers how they could discern when the world has was actually entering into the beginning of birth pangs. You know, pangs, like not good when, when, when we are going to the beginning of birth pangs. The approach of the end of the age, that's what it is, the end of the age was approaching, would see several phenomena on the earth occurring at the same time. The same time. It's going to happen at the same time. Remember that. Those phenomena would be many nations, many nations rising up against many other nations, kingdoms rising against kingdoms, famines, disease, epidemics, earthquakes in various places. In Mark 13, the word troubles are used by our Lord instead of disease, epidemics, wars between nations or even between kingdoms are and have been a common occurrence. History has recorded famines at various times. There have been times of great disease epidemics. There have been earthquakes in the past, but more so today, Yahushua tells these disciples, however, to be awaiting a sacrifice, a specific time during which all of these phenomena would be in evidence at the same time. The first such time in world history occurred during the years of World War I, 1914. So from that day to this day, this phenomena will be happening at the same time. What the prophet Isaiah actually was saying, or was who he prophesied, it will actually happen at the same time. See, now let's go back again to what the prophet Isaiah said, right? The prophet Isaiah clearly stated that the earth also is polluted by its inhabitant. And then what Yahushua clearly stated in that verse that we have just said, right? Let's go to that in Matthew, disease epidemics. And I want you to take note of this thing. Many nations, right? rising up against many other nations, right? Always remember that. Now, let's see what have transpired in our time that it's actually happening. Let us uh, see these things, okay? The current events providing that passage is actually uh, true. The passage that we have just read here. You, it's on, already on your screen. Current events proving this the passage that we have just read. What is NATO and what is its purpose? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO ensures that the security of its European member countries is inseparably linked to that of its North American member countries. The organization also provides a unique forum for dialogue and cooperation across the Atlantic. Now, what is BRICS? BRICS is an acronym for the powerful grouping of the world's leading emerging market economy, economies, namely Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The BRICS mechanism aims to promote peace, security, development, and cooperation. See, now in our current events, you can see there are two groups of countries. Are they in unison with one another? No, they have different agenda. Where do you think it's going to lead, beloved brethren? NATO and the BRICS. No. You know, NATO is a security alliance consisting of 31 countries from North America and Europe that were established actually in 1949 with the signing of the Washington Treaty Organization. 
the main objective of NATO is to protect the independence and security of the allies via political and military action. Read that. Google it, beloved brethren. Educate ourselves. Make certain that we are aware of what's going on in our surrounding. Don't just go. Wake up in the morning, go to work, come back. No, educate ourselves on current events and educate ourselves the more on God's instructions or the scriptures. Now, always remember that. Now, the bricks, they say they uh, are for security also, right? Security, right? They are for security. Now, another thing that we have to make certain of, they both have military powers. Actually, BRIC is growing, you know. Uh, according to them, there are already 19 countries that are applying to join them. So the world is now divided into two groups of countries. Now, remember the prophecy uh, in Matthew? It says there are many nations rising up against many other nations. That's what's going to happen according to the prophecy in Matthew, according to Yahushua, many nations rising up against many other nations. So is it like happening? Nail and bricks? Try to imagine it, beloved friend. Try to be uh, open-minded on what God is saying and what is actually happening in our surrounding or in the current events. Look what's, what's now happening in our society. Right, breaking the laws of God. Many people, you know, they're attacking religious environments, religious groups. There are freedom loving people, they say they want to be free, but they want to annihilate those laws. It could be God's laws and the laws of the land. Look at what's happening here in our surrounding. It's still, little by little, the law is being broken. You see, Look at what's going on. It, it, just like in, in the northern part of this state and the southern part of this state, actually the whole state and other states are actually suffering from homelessness. And there is no more law. You can, you can actually put your home anywhere you like. You know, the law is deteriorating. That's what's happening. You know why? That is what was prophesied. So be aware of what is being recorded in the scriptures and be aware of its happening. Now, another thing that we would like to take uh, focus on, disease epidemics, according to what we have read. Disease ep epidemics. Epidemics versus pandemic. Let's talk about that. Simply put, a pandemic is an epidemic that has started to spread across the globe. A disease is labeled an epidemic that's what was prophesied, epidemic, if it is spreading within a particular region, affecting many people in the area. So it is it's an uh, epidemic. Now, what we have experienced today, la, since 2020 up to this date, is no longer an epidemic. It, it actually, right, it actually crossed the, the continent. It's now a pandemic. So there is epidemic, pandemic, right? So the, the two words are actually the same. It's just like it's spread out. You know, epidemic, it's contained in one town. It was an epidemic when it was in Huan or Huyan, China, or Huan. I don't know how to pronounce that. It started there. It was an epidemic. But when it went outside and went to different countries, actually all over the globe, it becomes a pandemic. But it's the same thing. It's the same disease. That's what happened. Beloved brethren, why? Because we have defiled the earth. It's not God who put it there. He allowed that by because we have done that. He, we broke his law. We broke every law of the land that we that God actually sanctioned for us. And look what happened. And that's also a prophecy. That was prophesied by God. Now, we, are we going to blame God for all of these things? That's what other people were saying. No. God gave us the mind. Choose between right and wrong. Choose between life and death. That was given to us by God. 
So God did not create you and me as a robot. He created us as human beings. He gave us good and bad. And then we have to choose between good and bad. But many people, especially the people of today, are choosing to be bad. The current events, beloved brethren of our time, show the world is drawing to a close. That's what it meant, right? As prophesied by the scripture, and we are seeing it firsthand. Now, whatever purpose these two groups of countries have in their agenda, we believe it will be suppressed by the agenda in the millennial kingdom. We also, we believe that. Once the millennial kingdom was established, all of these things that we are seeing will be gone. That's why we as Yahushans, we have a, uh, a mindset that is ahead of others because we know what's going to transpire. And we are not surprised, but we are actually prepared and we will continue to prepare. Now, what will actually help us to overcome whatever the world experienced and is experiencing? Let us read this, beloved brethren. This is what we are supposed to do. First, 2 Corinthians 4, 18, for we fix our attention not on things that are seen. These are the things that we can see. Don't fix our attention on them, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. Now, what will help us, Yahushians, to overcome whatever the world experienced and is experiencing today. The Apostle Paul said, even a long, long time ago, we fix our attention, our attention, not on things that are seen. So we are seeing all of these things. You see NATO, you see uh, BRICS, you see uh, pandemic or epidemic and pandemic. You see wars, right? Wars in different places. Uh, there's a war right now. Now it's happening at the same time. Pandemic, war, pandemic, war, war, pandemic, and many things. It is happening at the same time. When it is happening at the same time, the scripture says, hey, focus your attention, not on those things that you are seeing, but on the things that you cannot see. We haven't seen God. We haven't seen Yahushua. We haven't seen the millennial kingdom. We haven't seen the Holy City, but we must focus on those things. We must focus on those that we cannot see. Now, to whom should we focus our attention first? What does it mean to fix our, not our attention on things that are seen? To whom should we focus our attention then? Hebrews 12, 2, this is what we can read. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Yahushua. There you go. That's what the instructions given by the apostles. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Yahushua, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him. He thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross, and he is now seated at the right side of God's throne. So what does it mean, beloved brethren, to fix not our attention on things that we can see now? Well, you have heard. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Yahushua. Why Yahushua? Why not God? Well, because Yahushua is the way to God. Remember that. So we fix our eyes on Yahushua, the Son of God. That's what we need to do. Fix our eyes on Yahushua because he is our religion and he will bring us to God, right? He will meet us in the air and introduce us to his father. That's what's going to happen. And then we come down, then we will see the millennial kingdom that we haven't seen. And then after that reigning in a, over a thousand years, reign with him, then we will see the holy city. That will be our last journey. We will be there forever and forever. Now, are we getting the message here, beloved brethren? Yes, there are lots of things that are happening in the world. Look what's going on. You see, people, God created male and female. You know, there is only he and she, but people are trying to debunk that. Hey, don't believe that. Don't use that as my pronoun or whatever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, we can see that, but we don't focus on those things. We don't mind about those things because we are very much focused on Yahushua, 
Because when we are focused on Yehusha, it means we are focused on the wedding in the holy city. And we are also focused on the millennial kingdom that he will be actually creating and we will be reigning with him. We are also focused on the holy city where uh, us and him will surrender to God. That's what's going to happen, beloved brethren. So fix our eyes. Focus our attention on those these things. We cannot see Yahuwah, have not seen Yahusha, the millennial kingdom, the holy city. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Yahusha, the scripture says. So the question now is this, beloved brethren. Are, you, are your eyes fixed on Yahusha? Where are you focusing? Where, where, where is your focus right now, brothers and sisters? Well, personally, with me, and with the other ministers with me, we are focused on Yahusha. We're focused there. Now we are encouraging everybody. Let's all focus and fix our eyes on Yahusha. Now, how are we to focus our eyes on Yahusha, our Mashiach? How are we going to do that? Let us read 1 Thessalonians 5 15, 18. See to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in the Christ, Yahusha. How are we to focus our eyes on Yahusha HaMashiach? Develop, beloved brethren, develop a constant prayer life. Prayer was important to Yahushua and the disciples. Prayer can help keep our focus, you know, and, and the disciples. It was prayer was important to Yahushua and the disciples. And prayer can help keep our focus on Yahushua, especially when the wind and waves of life begin to bother us. Yahushua is the one who taught us how to pray. Remember what he said? He said, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Do you still remember? Recorded in Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Now besides constant prayer, is there another way to direct our gaze towards Yahusha? Uh, let us read what is recorded here in uh, Acts 2.42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayer. So besides constant prayer, is there another way to direct our gaze towards Yahushua? Yes, there is. Devote ourselves to the teachings of the apostles. We, we must do that. Let us surround ourselves with like-minded believers. The same, you know, I believe, and my family believes the same way I do. We are devoted. We devote ourselves. My friends, closest friends, how about you, beloved brothers, those who are hearing this? We, we have to make certain that we have to devote ourselves to the teachings of the apostles. To the fellowship. It's no secret that Yahushans need community. We do have our own community. We see in Acts how the early Yahushans was intentional in fellowship. To the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Like what we're doing. Do we have fellowship? Yes. We are devoting ourselves to studies of the words of God. To studies uh, of what's going on in our surrounding. And that's our fellowship. We gather every Saturday and Sunday, although we don't meet each other, but we are hearing the same thing at the same time. So as the, the early Yahushas, they were devoted to coming together during their time. We need fellowship, beloved brethren, but within the fellowship, we need our brothers or sisters in the Christ to keep us accountable. When the wind and waves come and life seems to turn sour, 
we need those who will remind us to keep our eyes fixed on Yahusha. But not only that we need them to stand with us in life's hard and difficult seasons. What is an important benefit, beloved brethren, we have received when we believe the message of this truth that we are now sharing amongst ourselves. That's what we are doing right now, beloved brothers and sisters in the Christ. We do have our fellowship. That's why we are part of one movement, the movement created or established by our Lord and Savior, Yahusha Mashiach. So although we are from different parts of the world and we are not seeing each other, we in one spirit is actually having one fellowship together. That's what we're doing. So you might be far away from where I'm, where I'm at, where brother er earning at, or where others at, but we are on the same page of fellowship because we are doing the same thing. We are devoting ourselves together to obey the teachings of the apostles and continuously pray. You see what's going to happen in this world. What do you think will happen if those two groups of country collided? Do you think you as a civilian, we as a civilian can communicate? That could happen, right? The communication will go down. So God is actually, what is God telling us today? Even though we are separated apart, we still have the same fellowship. That's why we were instructed to look up. Our leader is up there. Because if, if our leader is in one place, let's say our leader is in one country, let's say that, like what other religions have. Catholics, their leader is in uh, Vatican, right? And then uh, let's say Iglesia de Cristo, where we came from, their leader is in uh, uh, Quezon City, all right? So when there is no more communication, how they can, how they are going to look at their leader? They cannot anymore, right? But us, we can still look up. And because our leader, Yahusha, the head of the Movement is right there. The head of the church is right there in heaven. We can look up. And we can actually pray. That's why we also recommend to you, beloved brethren, all of these homily that we are having, download it in your electronics. You can download it. You know, if you download it in your computers, you can always access it without even without Wi-Fi. So download all of these Bible studies. Download the... As long as there is an electricity, and there are lots of ways to have electricity, you can carry actually a, a battery with you and then recharge it uh, from the sun. We, are, we have the technology already. So whatever happens to this world, we can still hear the words of God delivered to us. There are already hundreds of lessons that we have already discussed. So download all of those things. Prepare yourself for the worst. Because we know what's going to happen before the rapture. Now, what is an important benefit if we have received this truth? When we re believe the message of truth, this is the important benefit. Ephesians 1, 13, 14, 5, 15, 21. When you hear the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believe in him, you were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. That's the benefit. He is the down payment of our inheritance for the redemption of the promise of the possession to the praise of his glory. Pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless actions, but be filled with the spirit. Is speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music from your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Yahushua the Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Christ. You see, beloved brethren, what is important? What is an important benefit we have received when? We believe the message of the truth. First, we receive the Holy Spirit. What is that Holy Spirit? How important is that Holy Spirit? 
That's the seal of the promise. Yeah, you were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit. See, what does it mean? That's the payment of your inheritance for the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. And what is the instruction? Pay careful attention then how you walk. See, let's pay careful attention to how we live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Wise people is always prepared. Wise, wise people are always ready. That's why whatever happens in this world, because we know it's going to happen, right? We know it's going to happen. We will not be part of the seven-year tribulation because before the rapture, you know, before before the rapture, these things are going, it's already, bad things are already happening. Once the rapture was already happened, and then the next thing that will happen is the great tribulation here on earth. And we are no longer here when it happens. But right now, because rapture is not there here yet, be filled by the spirit, right? That's what the scripture says. Be filled by the spirit. The Holy Spirit should fill our lives every day. We were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit. We know that. Many seem to think it's a one and done thing that we don't need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us again. The Apostle Paul tells believers in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, to be filled by the Spirit and don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless actions, but be filled by the Spirit, as what we have read. Having a constant filling of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, will help keep our eyes fixed on Yahusha because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Yahusha. When we live a life devoted to prayer that's surrounded by our brothers and sisters in the Christ to hold us accountable and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us daily, the dangers and the troubles will be away less worrisome. It is true. The Lord may not remove them every time, but He doesn't. If but if He doesn't, we can be rest assured of His presence when our eyes stay fixed on Yahusha, the Christ. Always be reminded of all of these instructions, beloved brethren, that we are receiving, and try to figure out. Okay, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? You see. What's going on in this world that we see doesn't actually bother us, but it excites us. Why? Because we know Yahushua is almost there. He's coming to take us with him, and we will meet him in the air, beloved brethren. That's our faith. We are not bother what's going on in our surrounding because we are not focused on those things. Our focus. Our eyes is fixed on Yahusha. Now, in what other uh, moment do our souls are filled with the Holy Spirit? Because we need to fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. We need to fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit as the instruction to us is. Now, in what other moment do our souls are filled with the Holy Spirit? In Acts 10, 34, 36, 44, 46. Then Peter began to speak. Now, I really understand that God doesn't show favoritism, but in every nation, the person who fears him and does righteousness is acceptable to him. He sent the message to the Israelites, proclaiming the good news of peace through Yahushua the Christ. He is Lord of all. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speaking in other languages and declaring the greatness of God. So in what other moment do our souls are filled with the Holy Spirit? In moments like what we are doing right now. See? When the words of God are being preached to us and we are understanding every detail of those words that are being read to us and we are willing to accept them and we are willing to put them into practice, then the Holy Spirit is with it. Like what happened during the time of Peter, right? Peter was still speaking those words, according to what we have read, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who heard the message. 
See, we received the Holy Spirit when we were baptized in the church. We received that Holy Spirit. That's the guarantee. That's the guarantee of our inheritance. That we belong to the Christ. That's the guarantee. But we should be filled with that same spirit every time. Remember, we're not supposed to grieve the Holy Spirit. Because once we grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will leave. Once the Holy Spirit leaves us or left, then we don't have any more relationship with the Christ and with Yahuwah, our God. So in every gathering together to hear the message, the Holy Spirit was not only with Peter, the Spirit also fell upon those to whom Peter was speaking. In other words, the Holy Spirit was totally involved in everything which took place. So what's going on in our life, the Holy Spirit will actually going to get involved. There is the need to depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit in teaching God's words. The Apostle Peter received the Holy Spirit while he was preaching, and it did not just stay with him. It actually spread to those who are listening. The Spirit of truth. If we are understanding these instructions right now, the Spirit is actually being filled in us because we understood what the message is all about. That's the Spirit of truth that is being sent to us. So every time we gather like this in our Bible study, when we study the words of God, when we uh, study the words of God during the worship service, we are actually receiving and re being revealed with the Holy Spirit. So don't be absent in the worship service. And always treat our worship like this, a holy gathering. We are not coming here. You just woke up, and we are still on our, you know, sleeping clothes, and and attend this gathering. That's not the right way, beloved brethren. So if we are doing it that way, the Holy Spirit has not been sent to those people who are doing it that way. And I believe majority of us, or most likely all of us, are already doing what we are supposed to do. We prepare ourselves prior to the attending of the gathering. Although a gathering is on air like this in the web, but we are still gathered. We still have this fellowship. And we must make certain that we respect this fellowship. Now, how did the Apostle Paul prove that they need to depend upon the Holy Spirit in the teaching and preaching of God's word? Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 1, 5, and then 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, 6. When I came to you, brethren, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God in lofty words or wisdom. Try to, to uh, comprehend what he was saying here. He said, when I came to you, brethren, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God in lofty words or wisdom. Not in flowery words. For I decided to know nothing among you except Yahusha the Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in much fear and trembling. And my speech and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now remember what the Apostle Paul said here, because there are lots of preachers today. And, and people are drawn to those kind of preachers. The way they handle themselves, the way they look, the way they dress, the way they speak. Yeah, people are being drawn to them. Now remember what the Apostle Paul said. My speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of man. Don't rest your faith on any preacher, but in the power of God. And that is exactly what we are trying to go up, get across from here to you, brothers and sisters. That's why every time, before we even actually pray, you can already read the passage, the instructions right there by the apostles. 
The apostles clearly stated the one who plants and the one who waters, not important. We are not important here. What is important is the message that comes from God. That is the power of God. And the Holy Spirit will actually deliver it to you. With the Holy Spirit, you will understand it. So beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, are we feeling the same way? That we have the Holy Spirit? That we are not resting our faith or our belief on man, but on the power of God and in in God's power? We should. You see, people will try to trick you, us. We were tricked before. We were actually like focused on that person. Oh, he's good. He was doing the good things of God. Until God exposed them to you and me, to everybody. But, you know, others still, still rested their faith upon the wisdom of man. But those who truly belong to God, to Yahuwah, no, we did not. We didn't buy it. We didn't buy now what they were saying. Why? Because we know. They are all hoax. There is only one who could lead us to the Father. There's only one placed by God to be our leader, to be our king, Yahushua HaMashiach. Not any preacher. We are all brothers. Preacher, not important. You see? Are you going to fix your attention on things that are and things and people who are not important? Tell me. I'm not important. <laughs> Other ministers here are not important. That's our faith. We're nothing. We're nobody. You see, it's just like a deliverer or a carrier of the mail. What is important? The mail or the carrier of the mail? Who carries the mail to you? You know who? Is he important to you? Probably you didn't even meet him, right? But the message that he delivers, the letter that you receive, that is what is important. Now so let's apply that that uh, attitude when it comes to the message of God. The message of God will be delivered to us by whom? By those who were sent. Once that message was already delivered, and you have figured, oh, this is. The, the letter, this is the, the message from God. You still look for the deliverer of the message? Not anymore. That's why the scripture says they are not important. What is important is the one who sent you the message because he will be the one to make that message grow in you, in us, beloved brethren. So that should be our mindset. Always remember, because that is another way to make sure that, you know, the apostles proved that they need to depend upon that Holy Spirit in the teaching and preaching of God's words. That's the way uh, those who were actually empowered by the Holy Spirit preaches. They don't bring people towards them. They, they actually bring people, points people towards God and his begotten son. You see, what was the result in the iglesia where we came from? Are we still looking for Yahusha? And when we there, and when that leader is going to officiate a worship service, what do we do? We wake up early. We probably some of us are not even what sleeping, dressing good, very much excited to attend that gathering that he will officiate. But when there is a regular minister, because he is the most important person to us before. You see, every preacher is not important. There is only one important person. Yahusha. Only one. The rest, not. Even the apostles, not that important. They were the ones who said, we are not important. Yahusha is important. That's what the apostle Paul testified. Yahusha is important. I decided to know nothing among you except Yahusha the Christ and him crucified. That's the message. That's what I'm bringing to you. You see? This is what the Apostle Paul said. One of the greatest apostles. 
See? Paul's preaching was due to the power of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, it is not his mere human effort that produced such great results. There was confidence in the heart of Paul what, that what he was saying was the truth. This allowed his message to be powerfully delivered through the work of the Holy Spirit. Look what we got, beloved brethren. We used to believe, oh, we got the double-edged sword. Now we don't believe that no more. What we got is sharper than the double-edged sword. That's what we got, brothers and sisters in the faith. Our argument is stronger than theirs. We are using the words of God. How come? What is recorded in Matthew 18, 18, whatever, you change it to whomever. In Tagalog, it says there, tale. Why did you turn it into talak? Tale is not talak. That's sharp. Argue with that. You will lie when you argue with that because you're not arguing with me. You are not arguing with the Yahushians. You are arguing with God. How can you win? Iglesia ni Cristo. How can you win? Arguing with God. That's not tala, that's tale. That's not whomever, that is whatever. It's about how to make peace amongst each other, how to handle cases amongst brethren. It's not about registration. How can you argue with that? And when God said, that he gave, and when Yahusha actually was the one who said that, all authority in heaven and earth was already given to me. In Tagalog, lahat ng kapamahalaan sa langit lupa binigay sa akin. Why is it that you have that title? Tagapamahalang pangkalahata. Again, you can't argue with that. You know why? Because you would be arguing with what Yahusha said. Peter preached with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he was able to deliver it powerfully, the message. Peter acknowledged the same thing. He emphasized the work of the Holy Spirit in the writings of the Old Testament prophets. Actually, the apostle Peter, not Paul, Peter wrote in 1 Peter 1.12, It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in the things which have now been announced to you by those who preach the good news to you through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things into which angels long to look. That was Peter. Along with Paul, that was the apostle Peter who said that. Who wrote that to the Holy Spirit? The good news. The good news was preached through the Holy Spirit. It's clear. See, what we receive is so clear because it was delivered through the Holy Spirit. We got it, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Fellow Yahushians, we have the right thing. Our faith is based on God's wisdom. Delivered through the Holy Spirit. That's what we got. That's why others can no longer argue. Right? Like what those people who say, hey, you know what, we need to practice this uh, Sabbath thing. Well, look at this. The scripture says, the laws of Moses, obsolete. What does it mean? Expired. What's the new law? The law of of the Christ, messianic law. That's what you're going to follow. Did Yahushua, did Yahushua practice Sabbath the way it was practiced by the Israelites or by the Jewish people? No. That's why he was persecuted and he was actually questioned by not obeying the Sabbath, by not practicing the Sabbath, and also as his apostles. Now, you want to practice that? Are you practicing that Sabbath thing? The thing here is this. What law are you following? The law of Yahushua or the law of Moses? It's obsolete. You, it's just like you are drinking an expired milk. 
Ah, it will not give you any good thing. The new thing is the messianic law. Yahusha is our Sabbath. Or do we still have Sabbath? Yes, Yahusha is our Sabbath. At the very end of this journey. What else? Do we still have Sabbath? Yes, but not the way the Israelites were practicing it. We work every day. We work six days sometimes. And then the seventh day, we have our day off. That's our Sabbath. You see? And we dedicate ourselves not only on the days or the seventh day, but every day now, we are dedicating ourselves to God. Whenever we are actually not defiling the earth and doing what is right, we are dedicating ourselves to God. Thus, true biblical preaching and teaching is done in the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is done during our gathering for worship. Because it is so important for us, beloved brethren, to continuously be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we can focus our eyes on Yahusha and we are filled with the Holy Spirit during our gathering. What are the instructions of the apostles regarding our gatherings? Hebrews 10, 24, 25. And let us consider thoughtfully how we can encourage one another to love and to do good deeds. This is what we are always hearing now. You know, there are people who might be different from us, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Let us not judge them. We should not be judgmental. We might not agree with what they do, but we don't judge them. We don't hate them. We love them. Yes, we are sometimes hacking them with the sword sharper than the double-edged sword, like what we are doing with the Iglesia, the Catholics, Protestants, and other religions. Because that's our duty. Remember, the duty given to us is to chaff. You know, we were like a threshing sledge. And then the Apostle Paul clearly stated, our weapon is not the weapon of war like flesh and blood. Our weapon is spiritual and we have to destroy arguments and opinions that are against God. That's what we do. But we are doing it out of love, which we are hating them. When we say, why are you calling yourself tagapamalang pangkalahatan? Because we love that person. Come on, brother. Give it up. That's not for you. That is for the Christ. And that will be detrimental to you. That's love. Who said that to you? Everybody nod their heads on you and say, yes, boss. Yes, sir. But not us, because we love you. We know you're breaking that law by just claiming that you are the tagapamahalang pangkalahatan. That is against the law of God. That is not spiritual. That teaching is not guided and powered by the Holy Spirit. So we say it to you. Give it up. Bring it back. Take it back to the rightful honor. Tell the people you are an ambassador of Christ. And we will accept that. If you are not changing that, you will keep on hearing that from us. So you will have no reason. And you too were calling him that. We used to call him them, them that. This is love. Because the Bible said, let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds. This preaching is for good deeds, not to attack you, not to ruin your life. We are not meddling with your private lives. We are meddling with the preaching that you are telling people. We are being corrected by the words of God itself, being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Not forsaking our meeting together. Brothers and sisters, don't forsake this gathering. As believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of some. So is your job more important than your worship of God, than the gathering? Well, it's up to you. But the instruction is don't do that. But encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. Are we not seeing it? The scripture says, 
Everything that will happen will happen at the same time. Wars. What else? Countries will fight against other countries. BRICS, NATOs, they're already fighting. What do you think that war is in, in uh, Ukraine is all about? The other one is a brick. Ukraine is trying to become a member of NATO. So that's already spark. There's already spark. We don't know how far it's going to escalate. But whatever happens, beloved brother, we don't focus on that. We are focusing on what is being instructed to us. Encourage one another to love, pray. Although the world is deteriorating, we still pray because that is what God said. Pray for all people and pray for those authorities who are leading the people. Whatever happens, we will always pray because that is God's instructions. Beloved brethren, to you and to me, do good deeds. This is a good deed. We believe this is a good deed. Exposing the wrong opinions about the knowledge of God. That was a wrong opinion. You made us believe. Brother, I'm not going to mention your name, but it's you. Your title made us believe that we have to be registered here on earth to be registered in heaven. You made us believe that we need to keep our registration in your congregation, in every congregation, to make certain that our names are written in the book of life. That is not love, brother, when you did that. Because that was a wrong belief. Now, what is the beauty of always leaning on God in times of danger and trouble like this, because we are in great trouble, in very extreme trouble and danger now. Listen, in Psalms 116, 18, 2 to 9, I will stand before the gathering of his people and give Yahuwah what I promised. Yes, he paid attention to me, so I will always call to him whenever I need help. Death's ropes were around me. The grave was closing in on me. I was worried and afraid. Then I called on Yahuwah's name. I said, Yahuwah, save me. Yahuwah is good and merciful. Our God is so kind. Yahuwah takes care of helpless people. I was without help and he saved me. My soul, relax. Yahuwah is caring for you. Love. Lord, you saved my soul from death. You stopped my tears. You kept me from falling. I will continue to serve Yahuwah in the land of the living. So what is the beauty, beloved brethren, of always leaning on God in times of dangers and troubles? You have heard what is recorded. When troubled, we do best to hold our peace. For we are apt to speak unadvisedly. Yet there may be true faith where there are workings of unbelief. But then faith will prevail. And being humble, we shall experience his faithfulness. The experiences we have had of Yahuwah's goodness to us in answer to prayer are great encouragements to us to continue praying. We have sped well notwithstanding our unworthiness, beloved brethren, and our infirmities in prayer. And therefore, why may we not? God answers every prayer. Though it might not be granted right away to make us love it and expects this from us in return for his favor, why should we glean in any other field, beloved brethren, when we have been so well treated in this. Remember what David said in what we have just read. Nay, I will call upon him as long as I live, every day to the day and the last day. Take note, beloved brethren, as long as we continue living, we must continue praying. 
this breath we must breathe till we breathe our last. Why? Because then we shall take our leave of it. Until then, we have continual location for it. Let David speak his own experience. God, Yahuwah, supported him under his troubles. In his prayer, he said, I was brought low, was plunged into the depth of misery, and then he helped me. Help me both to bear the worst and to hope the best. Help me to pray, else desire had failed. Help me to wait, else faith had failed. I was one of the simple ones whom God preserved, David said. The poor man who cried and the Lord heard him. David wrote that, Psalms 34, 6. God's people, like us, are never brought so low. But that everlasting arms are under all of us. And we cannot think who are the sustained. Nay, it is in the time of need, at the deadlift that God chooses to help you and me. When we can no longer turn, when we don't know what to turn to, what to do in those days, when God exposed the wrongs that we are believing, we don't know how. We don't know how to worship God. We don't know how to continue. And God guided us little by little until we are now here. He told us what he has done. I chose you, a very small remnant. I will send leaders like you have before. I will rename you. You will know my name. You will know the name for salvation. Now we have it. Now God is telling us. The world was defiled by the people I place. But we as Yahushans, we have a deeper role, not just to know what's going on, but to deliver to people what God's plan is in obedience to all Yahuwah's precepts. What benefits, beloved brethren, do his children surely receive? Let us read again what is recorded here in Deuteronomy 32, 36. Yahuwah will rescue his people when he sees that their strength is gone, he will have mercy on those who serve him. Comprehend that, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Take note of what Yahuwah said. Take note of that. Yahuwah will rescue his people when he sees that their strength is gone. He will have mercy on those who serve him. So who amongst his people, he will rescue when their strength is gone, those who serve him. So how are we serving Yahuwah? That's why we are encouraging everybody here serve Yahuwah the way he wants to be served. Now, when Moses had finished reciting all these words to the people of Israel, he added, take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. He said, take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. He said it then, we can apply that also in our time today. Because that is also part. You remember Yahusha? Although he said, although there is already a change, that the laws of Moses was absolute, he did not erase it. He enhanced it. That's what he meant. 
See, he made it into two, if you remember. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love your neighbor the way you love yourself. That too are the two greatest commandments. And if you obey that too, you are already obeying all the commandments, including this. Take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. Next instruction. Pass them on as a command to your children so they will obey every word of these instructions. Don't just keep it amongst ourselves, beloved brethren, pass it on. When was the last time you pass on to others that the name of God is Yahuwah and the name of his son is Yahusha? When was the last time you did that? So if we were not doing that yet, we have to do it. We have to pass it on. Not only to our children, but to everybody. These instructions are not empty words. These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land and you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. Try to remember all of those instructions. In obedience to all Yahuwah's precepts, what benefit do his children surely receive? You heard what Moses recorded because that was also emphasized by Yahusha. You see, that when we obey God, what he received, we will also receive. What he experienced, we will also experience. So beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, yes, what's going on in the world is really terrifying to many. That's extreme danger. We are facing extreme danger and trouble. But we are not going to suffer with the rest of the world. And we will keep on telling other people who are on the wrong. Not in, in logical sense. We will continue destroying their arguments. And because we love our brothers and sisters who were in the former religion where we were at, Iglesia de Cristo, they will keep on hearing from us all of this instruction. And those who lead them, we love you. That's why we are telling you the wrongs that you are doing. Based on what we can read on the scriptures. I, we know their ministers will try to combat it, but don't argue with God. And us brothers and sisters in the faith, let's not stop destroying those arguments and opinions. We will never stop doing that. Whatever happens in this world, it will happen. But we are excited it's happening because we know that the rapture is drawing near. Let us all rise and we shall pray. Merciful Father in heaven, with humility and meekness in our hearts, we say our prayers, thanking you for everything you have given us, the wisdom that has the power of that Holy Spirit, you have given it to us. Father, may all of these many people that you have created who are arguing with your instructions and their opinions are against the knowledge that comes from you. May they be corrected because they are our loved ones. The only thing we can do is to share with them what you have given us. But we beg you because you are the one who can change a person's life, a person's mind, change their demeanor, the opinion that there was in, inculcated into them. You can change them. 
because you are the one who calls people. You are the ones who choose people and you are the ones who are placing them in the right place where they can actually be chosen again to meet your begotten son in the air. We pray for our loved ones first. And we are praying for all the people here on earth. We are also praying for the officials of every government. We pray for them that they will change. That they will not will start will stop polluting the earth. Stop ruining the habitat of man whom you have created. Stop making it unclean. That our lives will be pure. That we will learn how to love one another. How to care for each other in a righteous way. Father, please bless every family attending this worship service. Everyone who is listening to your listen to your words. And everyone who's praying to you right now, continue to bless each and every one of us and make us worthy before you. Make us good followers of your begotten son that we will always encourage one another to love and to obey you. We firmly believe, Father, you have heard our prayers. For all of this we ask in the name of your son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, the love of our Abba, Yahuwah, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us today and forever. Amen. My beloved brethren, uh, same uh, instructions that we have and always pray you know, for, for the people, for all people, kings, and others in authority. Pray for them. And uh, we know that uh, we have a Bible study every Thursday. And thank you for sending us some topics that you want us to discuss. And we will keep on discussing that. So the, the purpose of that is to uh, question arguments of others. And they can also question our arguments. That's the purpose of that program. So that, you know, logical argument and Biblical arguments will actually surface, and then uh, we can actually make a choice which way to uh, to believe or which one to believe, which way to to go. So uh, let us invite our friends and our loved ones to uh, listen to uh, our Bible studies every Thursday, 7 p.m. Western or uh, Pacific uh, time. Pacific time at 7 p.m. right here. This concludes our worship service and may we have a very good Sunday.